Welcome back to video 10 in our series on basic SQL. As you recall from our previous lecture, we were discussing querying the relational database for a partial string. And we're going to continue with that series in this video. One of the topics also we're going to be talking about before we're finished in this one is the order by clause. So why don't we just go ahead and make order by the mystery word for this video. Now back to our discussion of querying for a partial string. You should recall that a string in SQL is enclosed in single quotes. The question comes when a single quote appears in the string that you're about to query. If SQL is looking at a single quote as being the beginning or the end of a string, what happens when there is a single quote within the string? How does SQL deal with that? So we're going to pick up right there with this video. Why don't we get started? Also, we need a rule to specify apostrophes or single quotation marks if they're included in the string because those the single quote as we see in this example is used to begin and end the strings. If an apostrophe is needed within the string, such as in the example of John's birthday, where you would have an apostrophe after the John, then it is represented by two apostrophes so that it will not be interpreted as ending the string. Notice that the substring comparison implies that attribute values are not atomic values, as we had assumed in the formal relational model. Atomic values are being indivisible values. Standard arithmetic operators can be used in a query, such as plus, minus, multiplication, and so forth. And also the between comparison operator may also be used. Let's see some examples. Query number 13. Show the resulting salaries if every employee working on product X project is given a 10% raise. We're selecting E.F name. That E looks like an alias. And in the from statement, we see here employee as E. So it is. It is an alias representing the employee table. Select the employee first name, the employee's last name, and then we're using an operation here, 1.1 times the employee's salary. As increased salary, <laughs> here is another alias to replace salary as the column name with increased salary. And we're pulling it from, as we've already seen, and uh, where joins them together and pulls up everything from product X. So we see how we can use the multiplication operator within our query. Query number 14, retrieve all the employees in department five whose salary is between 30 and $40,000. Select all, select all attributes from employee where open paren, salary between 30 and 30,000 and 40,000, close paren. And the department number is equal to five, pretty simple. SQL allows the user to order tuples in the result of a query by the values of one or more of the attributes that appear in the query result by using the order by clause. The default order is in ascending order of values. We can specify the keyword DESC if we want to see the result in descending order. The keyword ASC can be used to specify ascending order explicitly, even though ascending order is the, the default. Let's take a look at this one. Retrieve all employees and the projects they are working on, ordered by department, and within each department, ordered alphabetically by last name, then first name. All right, we're selecting the department's D name, the employee's last name, employee's first name, and the project's project name. And we know this because we see these aliases B 
being defined here, where the department numbers equal the employee department number and so forth. Order by department name, comma, employee name, comma, by employee first name. In the order by statement, the order is according to the order in which the attributes appear in the statement itself. Therefore, up here, the projects they're working on order by department. There it is. And then ordered by the last name and then first name. A simple retrieval query in SQL can consist of up to four clauses, but only the first two, selecting from, are mandatory. The clauses are specified in the order indicated here, with the clauses between square brackets being optional. The SELECT clause lists the attributes to be retrieved, and the FROM clause specifies all the tables needed in the simple query. The WHERE clause identifies the conditions for selecting the tuples from the relations, including JOIN operations if needed. ORDER BY specifies an order for displaying the results of a query. Two additional clauses, GROUP BY and HAVING, will be described later. We'll go ahead and take a break here. We have one video left in the series on the chapter Basic SQL. And then we will move on to the next chapter, more on SQL. So let's go ahead, submit your mystery word, go check your knowledge on this one, and when you're ready, come on back for the final video 11 in this series.